Hey everybody and welcome to week four of class. Hey, I hope you're having a great week and I hope you're enjoying the course so far. Uh, and uh, hopefully this week's content will just keep you jiving and keep you going. So um, what we're going to be doing this week is we're actually going to be looking at two really significant things that take place at the turn of the century and which continue into uh, the 20th century. Okay. Um, the first of these is, in some ways, a continuation of uh, what we call America's manifest destiny, an idea that um, God ordained America to spread from sea to shining sea. Now, by the time um, we get to the Civil War and we get you know, to where we are time-wise in this class, the United States is a continental empire. It's taken over the entirety of the uh, continent uh, that the United States currently encompasses. But that doesn't necessarily mean that this notion of manifest destiny stops. Indeed, uh, during the latter part of the 19th, early 20th century, the United States, like many other countries who had been doing this long before, the United States will begin a process of imperialization and they will go to war with various countries, specifically Spain. Uh, we will purchase land uh, such as Alaska uh, we will take land such as Hawaii and we gain possession over certain territories such as the Philippines, Guam, and Puerto Rico. Uh, and we do so so as to extend American influence. And one of the things that we're going to be looking at this week, uh, in addition to explaining how and how this process began, is we're going to be looking at the different arguments. Why did certain people want to imperialize and why didn't certain people want to imperialize? And we want to understand these arguments, and we really need to understand both sides. Uh, and so uh, be prepared to uh, think through those various arguments as it will be fairly central to your discussion board this week, okay? Uh, the other topic that we're gonna be looking at uh, is uh, a, a topic that has social, cultural, political, and economic ramifications, and it is a period in, in our history known as the Progressive Era. Um, the progressive era, or those who called themselves progressives, really found their root in a group of people known as the populists, and we talked about the populists earlier. Um, but the progressives were looking to try and uh, address many of the economic and social problems created by the Gilded Age, you know, child labor, working conditions, monopolies held by a whole range of different companies, including uh, you know, the, the, the oil companies and the railroad companies. Uh, and so uh, many people on both sides of the political spectrum, by the way, Democrats and Republicans could classify themselves as progressives. Uh, probably the most well-known president who was a progressive would have been uh, Theodore Roosevelt, TR, but you also had um, w uh, Woodrow Wilson was also considered a progressive. And so we're going to be looking at what the progressives believed in, uh, some of the things that they attempted to do. Uh, and in the end, one wonders whether or not they were successful. And in some ways, I think they were. And in other ways, I think that they weren't. Uh, but you want to be looking at where were the progressives trying to make their changes? Because indeed, one of the things that progressives wanted to do was to uh, make government much stronger. And they wanted government stronger on all levels, at the federal, state, and local levels. Uh, and they fought for, for a number of different types of solutions uh, to various problems. In fact, progressives tended to be very scientific. They wanted to be well-planned and well-organized in dealing with some of these issues, okay? So that's where we're going this week. One thing that is important that you need to be aware of is that for this week, you don't need to respond to another student uh, for their um, discussion board posts, um, ergo, thus, so... You, uh, you only need to post one time this week, although you are free to respond to other students. That's, of course, always encouraged, but you don't need to for this week. Um, so your only post is due by Sunday at 11.59 p.m., okay? Uh, one final thing, just so that you are aware, I will be out of town um, starting Friday of this week. I will have access to the internet, so if there's a major crisis that you have, um, you know, I'll try and get back to you, but just be aware that I will be out of town, actually out of state uh, this, uh, this weekend. So with that, if you do have any questions or concerns, contact me, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Otherwise, as always, go in peace, be warm and filled. May the force be with you. Live long and prosper, and may the odds forever be in your favor. Have a blessed week, guys.